What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. And here's my review of Netflix new documentary series, 800 Meters. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was really difficult sitting through this documentary. I mean, even though there had been many documentaries made out there about other terrorist attacks, but because this particular one is often forgotten, gotten yet equally horrific, revisiting this incident just sends chills down your spine. By the end of it, it's really hard to shake off. Ooh, there are no reenactments needed because the CCTV footage all over the town are more than enough to burn the images of the perpetrators into our memories. This docu explains the tragedy chronologically and thoroughly. They did not leave any details out. And yes, while justice was ultimately served, you may take comfort in knowing that the bad guys got what was coming to them. But there's really no winner here, no celebration at all. People lost their lives, people lost their loved ones, and they're never coming back. So 800 meters is a commemoration that's heartbreaking and devastating through and through. Directed by Elias Leon Simiani and produced by Ramon Campos in 800 meters in Barcelona, August 17, 2017, a van hurdled a top speed across the 800 meters, separating Plaza de Cataluna from the Juan Miro mosaic, smashing into a crowd of people. Hours later, another terrorist attack struck Camprilis. These events were perpetrated by young people who were believed to be integrated into Spanish society. How could something like this happen? There are a total of three episodes. The first one starts out with a horrible van attack, and then it quickly zooms back to show you the weeks and the days and the planning leading up to set attack. The intention here is not to humanize these bastards, but rather to connect the dots and to understand who brainwashes who. Episode 2 is the one that will stay with you long after. This is where the eyewitnesses and the survivors speak to the camera and recollect their own account of what happened on that fateful day as the van was speeding towards them. Some of their faces have to be blurred and some of their voices have to be altered, but none of them hold back in sharing the nightmare that's still playing in their heads since that day. Episode 3 is the aftermath and the manhunt. This episode kind of reminds me of the brave policeman who hunted down those Boston Marathon bombers. But the docu doesn't just end there. It also tackles themes of Islamophobia and immigrants, basically how this kind of tragedy scares the general public to their core, so much so that it causes them to blame their neighbors. As an immigrant myself, it really does bug me, because these jihadists give us immigrants a bad name. Those ungrateful little bastards turning on the country that has welcomed them with open arms. I can never wrap my head around such ingrates. This docu is very well put together and they did it with such reverence for the victims and their families. I also read that they had a book by an investigative journalist that helped guide and steer and shape the format. I mean, what an unforgettable and powerful docu-series this is. And the resilience of the people of Spain will triumph against hatred and evil.